Okay, so here's a short video, hopefully to help people out who are using Cubase for the very first time, but struggling a bit with the inputs and the outputs. Um, this is just a way that uh, I've set things up that I find quite useful, so I hope that this helps everybody. So the first thing to do really is on a Mac is to go straight down to Audio MIDI Setup and open up the box. Um, once you're in here, it should show you all the in and outputs that you've got plugged into your machine. So at the moment, I have got my iPad plugged in, USB cable, and I've also got an audio interface. You don't have to use an audio interface if you don't want to. You can use the built-in input, uh, the built-in microphone and the built-in output. But I'm going to uh, set up my audio interface and my iPad as the two uh, particular things that I want connected. So first things first, we have to click on Enable with the iPad. So I'll just click on, click on that. And as you can see, that's just popped up in the top area here of um, all the inputs and outputs that are available. Then to make things easier, we're going to click on the plus down here and pick Create Aggregate Device. And now you can see that over on this side, it's now showing all the uh, inputs and output devices that I have available. Um, so the first thing I want to do is um, I want to set up the or these two here, which are my audio interface and my iPad. So first things first, I'm going to click on the iPad. And it'll show here the device. There's an iPad, and I'm just going to tap on that fun, uh, first channel, channel number one, and just type in there left. And then again, this one, and just type right. Lovely, that's sorted. Now I've got an iPad with the channel one and channel two, channel one being left and channel two being right. Now I'm going to go to my audio interface and tick both of those. As you can see, that's already been done for me automatically, and it's added both of those because it's both the same item that's plugged into my iPad, uh, plugged into my Mac, sorry, and it's got a front left and a front right twice and channel three and four. So that's it. That's all I want. I don't really want my built-in microphone. I don't want my built-in output. So I'm all ready to go. So I'm just going to come over here to my new setup that I've created and just rename it to what I normally name it but you can name it anything you like, of course. Lovely, and that's done. And now, of course, that's just so that I can identify this particular setup out of all the different inputs and outputs that are available. So that's now OK. I can finish there. And I can open up Cubase. And I'm using Cubase Elements 11. And now you can see that it's uh, showing me that I've got a built-in audio to choose from. I've got an interface to choose from, an iPad, or my setup I've just created, which holds all of them in, which is the one that I would like to pick. And that's why I named it, so that I can actually spot it amongst everything else. Because obviously, if you've got many more things plugged in, it's going to show a lot more on this list. Uh, so I picked Dreamscape, and I'll go ahead and say OK. I'll now create an empty project and at the moment as you can see here it says that the uh, audio inputs not been set up yet probably the same with yours um, so if we now go to studios is the first thing that's well worth doing um, if you don't get that little box come up at the uh, first time that you you open up your cubase after setting up this new setup then you will have to go to studio setup and just make sure that the audio system is the one that you've just created. Mine was Dreamscape and of course if I tap on this drop down list you'll see all the other ones that are available but that's the one that I need. Um, it would say switch and then you would say OK and you now know you're on the right setup, the one that you just created in your uh, MIDI setup. So we're all right there. Let's go to studio and click on audio connections and now and this has already been put in the outputs and there's Dreamscape 1 and 2, meaning that the output is in channel 1 and 2. Then I'm going to go to inputs. There may not be anything in here, but even if there is, um, there might be just a stereo one, but it might not be connected. 
and I would take I would tap on that uh, sometimes it's be a little bit finical and right click and say removes just so that you can start from scratch because what we're going to do is we're going to add a bus so we're going to add a bus and we're going to call it iPad that's the one that we want to set or I want to set up first anyway I'll say add bus and you can see already that it's picked channel one and two and we know when we set it up that we had that on channel one and channel two so that's fantastic so that's already done it's as simple as that just going to add another one and call this Mike. Um, now that's part obviously a connection in my audio interface so when it creates it it will put it in channel three and four that's great but I've also got another input on my audio device my audio interface so I want to say add bus I'm going to call it auxiliary a guitar can be plugged in it or whatever in my particular interface so let's say add now that's tried to be as clever as it can and put it on the right ones but we know it's not because we know that uh, my audio interface that my actual um, input two inputs in my mic and my auxiliary are in channel three and four so I just need to change that one to three and that one to four and to just to explain it again, really, the iPad is using channel one and channel two input. The mic is plugged into my interface and my interface, as well as my auxiliary, are in input three and four. So there they are. So that's all done. Now, I'd like to um, keep that as a preset as well, so I don't have to keep um, putting this in in any other scenario. So we'll just uh, click on here and we'll say save preset. And I'll also call this escape so I know exactly what it is okay and that should pretty much be that now when I click on add I should be able to click on here and pick the three that I've just created down here oh, my mouse has just decided to play up a little bit there right okay so we're going to pick iPad that's great add track I'm just going to tack tap on monitor and then I'm going to find a, a synth on my iPad just to be able to make some sort of sound come through there's an 80s bass and that comes through lovely in stereo two channels that's fantastic now I, I have a mic plugged in as well but I'm, I'm not using that in particular at the moment but if I want to add a track for that then I would obviously just pick mic and it would then be using the other channels to create that one and that would be the microphone and if I tap on that and turn up my mic on my interface I should be able to see yeah um, a mono channel my microphone's quite a way away from me but I can see that it's flickering in mono there because I've got a, a mono microphone plugged into my audio interface so they're, they're two totally different inputs there so that's grand so it's all working perfectly well um, so I hope that this kind of helps and um, the, the two things that I would say is is that after you've set this up you could save this as a template so I'm just going to remove these tracks I'm just going to say file save as and name this template and I don't have to go through all that set up malarkey again because it will already be set up as an audio template so if I shut this now I can just show you and explain what thing this time you open up so if we now open up Cubase elements again And this time we decide to create another empty project we forgot about our template for instance we'll then see that you have to go through all that setup again now what you could do is click on uh, studio audio connections and you could just go straight to the where it says presets and pick up the saved one that you created and saved and it will bung them all in for you which is absolutely brilliant however we could save time not having to do that at all not save that for instance and just close up 
Cubase Elements. And we can pick template. And as soon as we pick template, it will just set everything up straight away for us so we don't have to keep going back and doing it again. That's that's the reason why I saved the template. And um, the other thing to actually remember is, and uh, I'll show you what I mean. I'd finished for the day and I'd pulled out my iPad with the cable. Um, the next time I try and open up Cubase. And I went to my template, for instance, it will show things missing. And that's because I haven't got one of the items plugged in that I set this whole thing up with in the first place. So it's just to say that as soon as you want to use all these same items again, you really do where uh, you start Cubase up. Otherwise, if you use that template, it will say there's things missing. So if I now connect my iPad back up. It now adds that back into my setup as an input. I can go to Cubase. That's my dreamscape again. And as soon as I go back into template, I now know that I won't have a problem with any of the setup. It'll all be in there, and if I click on audio connections, there it is. So a template is a great idea. If you save the template, you can just go straight into it every time. So that saves time and aggro. So I hope this helps um, anybody that was having trouble with the inputs and outputs, and um, thanks for watching. I'm Norfolk Boy. Take care.